When it comes to exciting stories and thrillers, this one might be the one for you to start with. According to The Guardian, it was listed as one of the best crime novels and Belinda Bauer was even listed for the Man Booker Prize in 2018. Now I'm not a literary expert so it's not really up to me to say whether it's worth it, but it is a good book. Hi folks, it's Mr. Nerikus and today we're going to talk about Snap by Belinda Bauer. Let's get to it. Now this book has three different storylines, or at least starts with three different storylines. We have Jack's storyline, Catherine's storyline, and this police's storyline. At some point, all these come together and that makes the book a bit easier to understand. We'll start with Jack's storyline, and this begins in 1998, when we read about Eileen Bright, who took her three children, Jack, Mary, and baby Joy, on a trip. Their car broke down and Eileen had made the decision to walk to an emergency phone to ask for help. And she told the children to wait for her in the car until she got back, but she never returned. Meanwhile, Jack had gotten impatient and he went out looking for her. He never found her. Eventually, we read how the police came to speak to his father and told him that they found his mother's body. We also read that there is a transcript of that final phone call and it says that there is a car driving off in the distance with the operator asking, hello, Miss Bright, are you still there? Then we go to 2001 and we read about Catherine Weil who was home alone because her husband, Adam, was in Chesterfield for work. She woke up to the sound or some sound in her house and she finds out that she was burgled and that this burglar left a knife and a note saying I could have killed her and he left this on the back of a birthday card she got from her mother for her birthday. She panics, she hides the knife, but she doesn't call the police, and this again is an important detail you shouldn't forget. In the following chapters we read about how she deals with this event, and at some point she has some friends over for dinner, and when they're ready to leave, they find out that their car has punctured tired, and the note saying, call the police. Again, this is a very important detail because someone is clearly trying to get Catherine to call the police. After a couple of chapters, we're introduced to D.S. Reynolds, a middle-aged police officer who is trying to solve a series of burglaries committed by someone they call Goldilocks. Now, they aren't able to find Goldilocks because he doesn't really steal anything in the houses he burgles. He breaks into the houses, sleeps on their beds, eats their food and goes to their stuff, but it doesn't really take a lot. We learn that D.S. Reynolds is a very ordered and meticulous man. He has his mother, whom he often visits, and he complains about her nosiness and the tendency to get into other people's business. Let's get back to the first storyline on Jack. So it's three years later and Jack is in his house with his sisters Joy and Mary. Their father ran away when he went off to get milk and he never came back. Now here's the spoiler. Their father, Arthur Weil, is a vagrant we read about in the chapter starting with spare change, spare change. Later in the story, Jack asks his father to return because they need an adult in the house and we learn about why later on. Now we also learn that Jack, Mary and Joy have a neighbour, Mrs Reynolds, D.S. Reynolds' mother. Now remember she is very nosy and she talks about all the funny business going about at her neighbour's house with her son. However, his annoyance with his mother's nosiness takes over and he waves it off like something that's not really relevant or something that's very redundant. Now this is something he regrets later in the story because he could have arrested Jack earlier had he listened to his mother. Now by this point we as readers know that Jack is Goldilocks and he burgles houses to collect food, money and stuff they need for their own house. Because again, they don't have a parent who's paying attention to them. So how does Jack actually know which houses he should burgle? Well, this is where Louis comes in. Jack has a friend called Louis, and Louis has a brother, Sean. Now, Sean is a mailman, and he collects mail of houses of people who go on holiday. And then he passes on this information to Louis, who pays Sean for this information. Now, let's get back to Catherine, because we're now at the point where the stories are slowly coming together. Later on in the story, Catherine is at the supermarket and she's heavily pregnant. And because she's heavily pregnant, she accidentally drops some of her groceries. A young boy comes over to help her and this young boy is Jack. She wants to thank him by giving him a cup of coffee and maybe a piece of carrot cake. 
So they sit down and enjoy this drink and this snack. And they talk about life, and at some point they talk about motherhood and being a mother, since Catherine is pregnant herself. Jack drops that his mother has been killed, and when Catherine asks what happened and how it happened, he pulls out a knife and says that this is the knife that killed him, his mother. Now Catherine is afraid, obviously, and Jack reassures her that he's not going to do anything to her. But he does say that he could have killed her, linking him to the burglary in Catherine's house. She panics and she's all afraid, and Jack says that this is Adam's knife and that Adam, her husband, had killed his mother. Now I'm skipping some of the scenes, but down the road, Jack and Adam confront each other, and Jack runs away from a very irate Adam. Catherine and Adam get in an enormous fight because she doesn't seem to trust him and she doesn't really believe the story that he did not kill Jack's mother. Diaz Reynolds, meanwhile, is still trying to capture Goldilocks. And he and his colleague, Diaz Rice, get a new superior, DCI Marvel. And they set up this sort of capture house so that they can catch Goldilocks right in the act. And Goldilocks falls for this trick and he burgles this house. Now remember when I said that Diaz Reynolds is a very orderly and meticulous man? Well, he forgot one minor detail that eventually leads to Jack realizing that he had been lured into a trap and fleeing the capture house. Jack sees a photo frame, or a picture frame, with the stock photo still in it, an image of children playing with a beach ball. Diaz Reynolds is embarrassed because Jack escaped the capture house because of his mistake. Jack, however, returns to the house and falls asleep in one of the beds, and while he's sleeping, the police is able to arrest him. Unfortunately for them, it's not an official arrest because they forgot to tell him his rights. So, Jack being extremely skeletal, escapes to the cell window and he can't really do anything about it. The police didn't really arrest him. Now, later on in the story, Jack returns to the police station and he brings Louis, ready to make a deal. Now, he brings Louis because Louis is an expert on knives. This is important. Louis identifies the knife the police kept as evidence from the murder of Eileen Bright as a VC knife, which is a custom-created, handmade type of knife. The knife Jack found at Adam's house is also one of the same VC knives and it is exactly the same as the knife the police have. Now this is not simply a coincidence given the fact that these knives are handmade and custom crafted. Now we also learn that Adam Weil was previously married to Angela Weil and they separated around the time Eileen Bright was murdered. Adam was arrested and investigated for the murder of Eileen Bright because he was in the vicinity of the murder and this is of course very suspicious. Now you're probably thinking, wait, he didn't kill her, right? Because that's what he claims. Well, we learn later on in the story that this is definitely not the case. So again, the police arrest him and they question him and Adam claims that he's lost everything because of this fact, right? He separated from Angela, he lost his job, he lost his friends and eventually his house. And he really puts emphasis on the fact that he's starting to get a new life with Catherine. After all, no one really wants to be friends with or work with someone or be married to someone who is investigated and being investigated in a murder case. So ahead lies the task of linking Adam Wilde to the knife they found at the murder scene in 1998. Now, Adam claims that he got this knife from his father when he became 21. And Diaz Reynolds starts by looking online for VC knives and he finds a poorly developed website which discourages people of buying a knife there. Now this website claims that VC knives was founded in 1988 and it doesn't really match up to the story of Adam who claims that he got the knife when he was 21 because when Adam became 21 the company wasn't even founded yet. So as such Diaz Reynolds, DCI Marvel and Jack go out to find who this VC person, the knife maker, really is. And they found out that it's not some dirty, fat bloke living out of his mother's basement. It's an elderly woman making knives from the back of her van. An insight they got from the neighbor of the VC knife address, Mrs. Flowers. Now, VC stands for Victoria Creed, by the way. They have Jack break into the knife factory van and steal some information. The files contain codes that give information about the knife type, the materials used, and the people who bought them. And one particular code stands out. There's one with an R at the end, which they claim is replica. 
Finally, they find the link between Adam Wilde and the two knives here at Victoria Creek make, meaning that he is indeed Eileen Bright's killer. Now there's one thing I need to point out before I can tell you how the story ends. At some point, when Jack's father had returned to the house, the police officers go to the house looking for him because they want to arrest him for burglaries. And when Jack finds out that the police is near, he flees to his neighbor's house, Mrs. Reynolds. And he starts cleaning and repairing her lawnmower, because he promised to do that long before in the story. Now she finds out that Jack ran away from the police and she starts interrogating him and asking him lots of questions like what happened, what are you doing and what did you do that the police is looking for you. And she finds out that he's been burgling houses and that he is a burglar. Now when he wants to go back she gives him a small glass clown for his sister because she's reading It by Stephen King. And this is relevant and we'll see why in a second. So how does this story end? Well, finally having his answer, Jack walks home and on his way he's stopped by Catherine Wilde in her green Volvo. Reassuring him that she only wants to talk to him, that nothing's going on, he steps into the car and he's confronted by Adam, who puts a knife to his throat, ready to kill him. Catherine drives off and takes the motorway and she's driving without any destination, so they just keep on driving. Catherine, who's very upset obviously, makes a wrong turn and Adam yanks the steering wheel to go left and the car makes a sharp turn. As a result, he loses the grip of the knife and Jack slams the clown right in his eyes, making him blind immediately. Adam eventually confesses that he had killed Eileen Bright and after this, Jack asks Catherine to stop near the place where his mother's car stopped in 1998 because he's able to recognize it. He recognizes it as the place where he stopped before. He gets out of the car, starts walking and he finds the nappy bag he hid back in 1998. The bag still contains some food and drink and he finds a picture of their family having a good time together at the beach. Now the story or the book ends with Jack taking a rest under a tree and slowly falling asleep. So this is a thriller. And if we look at some characteristics of thrillers, we see that most of them are present in this book. The book has some very good red herrings, which are explanations used to put us as reader on the wrong track. And an example of a red herring is the side story of Sean, which is used to explain why Jack was able to burgle all these houses and that makes us believe that he's Goldilocks, whereas Jack is Goldilocks. Another example of a red herring is the part on the VC knives, because we believe first that this is a man, that they're looking for Christian Creed, who's living in the basement of his mother. Now the interesting thing about this is that Bauer already kind of tells us that it's not a man we're looking for, because if we look on page 363, we can read that she says, um, Mrs. Creed appeared added through the plastic evidence bag. Well, isn't that pretty, she said. Are you sure you're looking for a man? We assume so, said Marvel. Mrs. Creed smiled moonily at him. To assume makes an ass out of you and me, so my mother always says, said Reynolds. But in the case of knives, I think it's a very fair assumption. So this makes that she kind of tells us and kind of indicates that maybe it's not a man you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for a woman making these knives. Since it's a good thriller, there are also many cliffhangers at the end of several chapters, and that makes this book into a real page turner. We have a hero, which is Jack, who is the main person we're following, and we have a villain, who could be someone like Adam. Now, good thrillers pose several questions throughout the story to help us answer the main question. And the main question in this book is, what happened to Eileen Bright? And all the other questions help us answer this central question. Now we don't get answers for all of the questions, but some of them are answered when you read on further in the book. Now the thing is that we really don't know the details of the murder, but we do get closer. Adam Wall eventually confesses that he killed Eileen Bright. Now, finally, the book has also an exciting climax in the penultimate chapter, when Adam and Jack are confronted with each other again, and when Adam is trying to kill Jack. But eventually, of course, Jack escapes and Adam is blinded, and we don't really know what happens then to Adam and Catherine, but maybe she brings him to the police station or to a hospital, or maybe she kills him, who knows? This book has some important details I want to point out. 
Again, I'm probably not doing all of them. I'm not pointing out all of the important details, but these are ones that I found important. Maybe you found one that I left out, and if that's the case, let me know in the comments what you think is a different important detail about this book. The most obvious one is the knife or the knives. And, you know, at the beginning we don't really learn about the knife. We only know that Adam has a knife that he's very fond of and there is Jack putting this knife back in Adam's house. Um, but we don't really know why it's so important. And we don't even know that it's eventually going to lead us to finding the killer or finding the link between Eileen Bright and Adam Weil. Mrs. Reynolds is also quite important in the story because she is the earliest link between Jack, or Goldilocks, and D.S. Reynolds. However, D.S. Reynolds doesn't really pay attention to what his mother is saying, right? Because he thinks she's very nosy and she should stop minding other people's business and mind her own business and look at her own house instead of other people's houses. Now, he realizes later on in the book that she's been living next to Jack all this time and he's very embarrassed when he finds out. And Jack at some point even points it right directly at him in his face in front of DCI Marvel. Because Jack and DCI Marvel made the deal that Jack would be let go if they find the killer of Eileen Bright. And Jack pulls out the clown in front of DS Reynolds when DS Reynolds is complaining that DCI Marvel is letting him go. Now DS Reynolds recognizes this from his mother's collection and he's embarrassed. Now the clown is very important because without it he wouldn't have been able to save his life um, at the end of the book. So this makes that Mrs. Reynolds is another very important character because she saves Jack's life, well, indirectly, of course. Now, one of the questions that is answered when we read this book is how is Jack able to get into all of these houses? How does he know which houses to burgle? And as I mentioned in the synopsis when I talked about this, we have Sean, who is Lewis's brother, and he passes on this information to Lewis, and Lewis passes the information to Jack. And Lewis makes some money out of it himself as well. Another important detail in the book is D.S. Reynolds' attention to detail. And I would like to point out that D.S. Reynolds is a very well-developed character. He spends a lot of time looking at details, especially when he's decorating the capture house with D.S. Rice. He's the clear opposite of her because she likes to cut corners and she, you know, she leaves things dirty in the house and she doesn't really clear up her mess. Um, but D.S. Reynolds does, and he is very meticulous. And of course, the irony is that it's D.S. Reynolds' fault that Jack escapes because he forgot to change the photo in the photo frame. Even though they had taken pictures of them together, of D.S. Reynolds and D.S. Rice, to make it seem like it's their real house. Now, another fact that's very important is the fact that Catherine doesn't want to call the police, and we don't really know why. We would wonder what Jack actually wanted to achieve by breaking into Catherine's house because he didn't kill her, he didn't take anything, and he only left a note and puncturing their friend's car. And the thing he wants to do is make sure that she calls the police, right? She, he puts emphasis on this in the note, call the police, and he wants them to investigate this link between Adam Weil and this knife and eventually the murder of his mother. Now, unfortunately for Jack, she doesn't really call the police and she tries to forget everything as soon as possible. Now, Jack was responsible for his little sisters and they did everything to keep the house in order on the outside, right? We read that the inside was a mess and there were mice and stuff. Um, and he does this to make sure that there is no suspicion of the fact that there were no adults living in the house and that they were on their own. Um, Mrs. Reynolds is the only one who is questioning their living situation and she goes by the house several times asking where their father is and, you know, they have excuses like he's away for work, he'll back, he'll back later on tonight, um, don't come back, etc, etc. And when she goes again, when the police arrive, he's already, Jack has already asked his father to come back and live in the house with them. Now the final detail is the word snap. And we learn why this book is called Snap at the end of the book when Adam is ready to confess that he killed Eileen Bright. And he claims that he did it because he snapped once, right? We know that he had some issues with Angela. They had a fight because he believed Angela was cheating on him. Um, and that's the reason why he snapped, right? He made the wrong decision. And if we look at the subtitle, which reads, one quick decision could be her last, um, I read this and interpreted this subtitle as 
um, Catherine making a wrong decision and eventually dying, especially when I was starting reading this book and read about Jack entering her house and read about Jack uh, leaving knives all over the place. Um, I thought it was about Catherine, but this subtitle is about Eileen, right? Because she made the decision, the quick decision, to stop the car, get out of the car and uh, go and find some help at the emergency phone. And as a result, Adam found her, Adam saw her, stopped for help probably, and for some reason killed her. Now here are some questions that I would ask on a test or an exam about this book. Find some characteristics of thrillers in the book. The book contains obvious characteristics, and this is definitely a question I would ask. There are some very good websites that explain the characteristics of thrillers, and if you open one of these websites and go through the book, I think you'll be able to find them very easily. I already mentioned and you know, gave the answer to this question by explaining the red herrings, the cliffhangers, the hero and the villain, but there are probably more you can find throughout this book. What does Adam do to make sure everyone believes he didn't kill Eileen Bright? This is a nice question to ask because it links everything Adam does to make sure that no one thinks that he killed Eileen Bright. Um, the answer to this question appears in the second half of the book and you might need to link things from several chapters together to be able to answer this question properly. But it is a good question to see whether you're able to understand the meaning of the book, whether you understood what the story is about and whether you understood what the relevance is of Adam and his actions. Why do you think did the author include the scene with Angela Weil? Now, this is a question that kind of relies on your own opinion and your personal interpretation of the book, but it also requires a very good understanding of why Angela left Adam. She probably put this scene in the book to make Adam seem more suspicious, right? To really put him as the person that could have killed her, right? That it, he would be able to kill her because he's very aggressive towards Angela, etc, etc. So that might be one of the reasons why she put this in the book. So, is Snap any good and should you read this book for school? Well, it really depends on whether you enjoy thrillers or not. It is a very good book, it's a very nice story. And when you really get into the story, it becomes a real page turner. For English language learners, however, I think it is very difficult. You need a very good understanding of English and you need a very good determination to be able to get through the first chapters. The three different storylines make it a bit difficult to understand and I can imagine that my students and other students who should read this book for school get bored and confused with all of these names and storylines and people that give different informations and different details about different things and eventually it will lead to the same conclusion, so that's very nice, but um, it is very difficult to start and get through. I also like how Jack and DCR Marvel and DS Reynolds help each other and eventually find um, the link between Adam Weil and the knives and eventually the murder of Eileen Bright. And I finally think that it's very good that we learn that Jack burgles because he wants to stay together with his sisters and he wants to take care of them. He doesn't do it for the money or to become rich or something. He is still in charge and even though he's just a child and clearly not ready to be in charge, he does everything to make sure that they are safe and they are happy to some extent. Now Bauer explains his behavior through the background and his actions and I think she's done an excellent job with this. Now if you're a very proficient English language learner and you're familiar with reading difficult and complex novels, I would recommend this book for school. If you're not you know, it might be a bit difficult and there are less complex books out there for you to start with and to read for school. And I think you would enjoy those even more. The take home question for this book is, why do you think did Adam Weil kill Eileen Bright in the first place? Leave your answer in the comment section to this question and let's see what you guys come up with. So that's basically it. That is Snap by Belinda Bauer. Now, I hope that you found this interesting and I hope that if you have a test about this book that you're able to understand what the book is about. Now, if you found this interesting too, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my Instagram for some posts and memes and other language related things. Um, stay tuned for the other videos about books because I have some very nice books I'm going to talk about in the future.